the neighbors are having a pool party again. Uh, well, maybe they're just not having a pool party. The neighbors are in their pool. That's it. Hi friends, welcome to episode 89 of the Quirky Monday Craftcast. My name is Kalisha and you can find me anywhere online as Nadira Tani. So thank you so much for coming to spend some time with me today. Um, today is, I never look up the date. Today is Wednesday, July 17th and I'm coming to you from my home in Central Florida um, where it's quite muggy. There were raindrops falling from the sky like seven minutes ago but then they stopped so I'm gonna try to get this podcast in before the rain decides to come back that might be a fail those are probably famous last words because I'm pretty sure I heard thunder like a couple moments ago it's Florida who knows um oh there's a tootie toot toot hey girl how you doing? Oh no. I think a raindrop just fell. I'm sitting in my chair today, which is a squeaky chair, because it's easier for me to grab everything and run inside if I'm sitting on a chair as opposed to if I'm sitting on the floor. Cause I got janky knees, y'all. I got janky knees. So let's talk about some craftiness. Cause I don't think I have any admin. So let's jump into finished objects. I finally finished my retreat shawl, which is a pattern by uh, Dawn Henderson. Oh, I think it's raining. It's a pattern by Dawn Henderson, and it is done. Um, it's I did it. I think one repeat shorter than intended than it was meant to be. One, two three four nope I did it to repeat shorter um, than it was that it's then it's written to be because I ran out of yarn and um, I don't think it looks too bad yeah like the points not not terribly off center oh my gosh it's totally raining y'all but ooh. Fancy. This is the first time I've put it on and like seen it on myself. It's raining, the dogs are barking. <sighs> Struggle bus. But yes, um, I made this from Barocco Remix Light, which is a 100% recycled fiber yarn. Um, the It's kind of like a DK to fingering weight. I don't know. It's totally raining. Oh my gosh. Like, are we raining for real, real? Or is this play play? We're wilding out today, people. We're wilding out. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to put this over the iPad. <laughs> Poor choices poor choices all around it's not gonna work oh this is this is for real this is for real this is not a drill okay we shall return Well, it was for real rain and also sunshine. Make up your mind, Florida. Okay guys, it is like two hours later and um, it's still raining. So I'm on my front porch and we've got some 
nature sounds. Um, so hopefully it's not too distracting. Um, we had just finished, I think, talking about the retreat shawl, which is here. Oh yes, I remember, because I had just wrapped it around myself and I was like feeling real good about myself, right? Um, I really like this purple. I don't really wear purple for real, for real, but this, this shade of purple is it's pretty great. Um, but yeah. So this was a really simple pattern. Um, like all of, all of this bit, <clears throat> excuse me, all of this bit is done in reverse stockinette. Um, and then this portion here is a cable texture. And there you go. Uh, yeah, it's a cable texture. It's very, very subtle on this yarn, which I really like. And um, yeah, I did, I did half, well, probably not half, probably like one and a half of the cable repeats with the cable needle. And then that got annoying. So I went online on YouTube and found a tutorial for doing the um, the cable twist without a cable needle and then from from there it just took off um, yeah I already mentioned that I stopped knitting the pattern two cable repeats shorter than it was intended to be because I was running out of yarn and um, it's fine so this I started it in April so from April to July it took me to finish this and that's only because I was working on a bazillion things in between but I'm glad that it's done um, I have this okay so I put this on my finished objects and then I carried it for a day and realized that I needed I want it to have a strap so it's like finished but not and that is this giant zipper bag I got this, this was a tea towel that I got from Joann's. And if you have watched any number of my podcasts, you know that I have a deep and abiding love for constellations, stars, and outer space. So when I saw this, this tea towel, I was like, oh my gosh, I want it. And I want it to be a bag. So it says, I wander under a starry sky. And it has a bunch of constellations on it. Now, one thing that I love about this um, print is that they are actual constellations like a lot of times whenever you see like constellation print on stuff they're just like random shapes and they're not like true constellations which irritates the mess out of me <laughs> so when I saw that they were actual constellations that just made me even more excited about making something from the print so that one is obviously um, Orion this one is Pisces um, that is Cephas, um, Leo, who else is on here? Big Dipper. Um, oh, and I believe this one is um, Pegasus, I think. It's not called Pegasus, it's called something else. But um, yeah. So excited! So excited! So yeah, so. What I wanted to do, I want to make a strap for it. And because it's so big, I was thinking like maybe doing like a shoulder strap. And um, I figured the best way to do that would be to get like a skinny belt from the Goodwill to recycle into a strap. So I got this white belt. It's just regular run of the mill white belt. And I think, I think I'm gonna cut it off. Can you see that, the holes? I think I'm going to cut it off right here at this hole and then right here before this hardware. And I haven't in exactly determined how I'm going to attach it. I think I'm going to, is that a mosquito? Oh no, it's just a fly. I think I'm going to poke holes in it um, with like an awl or something like that and then hand stitch it to the bag. Um, but I think that, this fly is annoying, I think that this much base will be pretty good for a shoulder bag or a shoulder strap 
So um, hopefully by next episode, I'll have that done and you guys can see if that was successful. Fingers crossed that it will be successful. And that's all I have for finished objects. Um, so let's move on into works in progress. So this portion of the podcast is going to be freestyle because when I wrote my notes, I had no works in progress and now I do. So last night I cast on my Brothers Not Twin socks and that's a pattern by Diane Ugo. Um, and it is another pattern from my Black Fibers Black Threads Make Nine. I have been saying that I'm gonna cast it on. I've been talking about casting this on for quite a while. So um, last night I was like, all right, you know what? I need something to do. I don't feel like spinning right now, so I'm going to cast on a project. And my plan was to just do the cuff. This fly is like all in my business. What do you need? Go away. Homie, leave me alone. Brothers Not Twin Socks, pattern by Diane Ugo. My plan was to just finish the cuff last night and then leave the beginning of the patterning for today. Um, I didn't. I got like half a pattern, half a pattern repeat into the first one. And um, then I decided to stop. So the, the Brothers Not Twins sock pattern is a part of Diane's uh, collection called the Fairly Odd Socks where each pattern has two variations so that you can make socks that are similar but not the same. Um, in Brothers Not Twins, the patterns are called James and John. And I am doing the James, I think. Yes, I'm doing the James pattern. So you can't see much of the patterning as of yet. You can't see any of the patterning as of yet. Um, so I'll put up a picture. Um, the one that I'm doing has is just the cabling. The John pattern has cabling and eyelets, I believe. So, yeah. The yarn that I'm using is Jojo Land Melody uh, Superwash. It's 100% superwash wool. And the colorway doesn't have a name. It's just MS12, I think. So that's what it looks like. It's in subtle gradation. So that's going to be pretty cool. The other ball that I have is caked up so you can kind of see more of how it works, how the colors go. So this colorway makes me think of like the night sky and like celestial galaxy kind of colors. So I put that progress keeper on it, a little star and moon, because I thought that was appropriate. So that's my only uh, work in progress. Um, I am doing the cables without a cable needle, which is, um, it feels a lot different going from the retreat shawl where that, that yarn was much thicker and I was working on bigger needles, doing that cabling without a cable needle to going back to fingering weight and sock needles, doing those cables without a cable needle. I kind of felt like I was working on toothpicks, but I'm getting back into the swing of it. So that's the only thing that I have for works in progress. Um, I don't have any maker plans. Oh, that's not the only thing I have for works in progress. I have this little project. Ta-da! That's yellow. <laughs> um, yeah. So what is this, you might ask? So. A couple episodes ago, um, I was talking about how I wanted to yarn bomb my spinning wheel. So um, I had been kind of playing around with how I wanted to yarn bomb it. Um, oh, and for anybody who doesn't know, yarn bombing is essentially covering an item with a knitted or crocheted fabric. So I was trying to figure out how I wanted to yarn bomb my spinning wheel and I finally came up with a plan. And what I'm going to do is cover the spokes on the inside of my wheel 
with rainbows. So I'm really excited about this because I feel like it's going to be so cool when it's finished. So um, my spinning wheel, like the big wheel, I don't know what that wheel is called, whatever, the big wheel on my spinning wheel has six spokes that come out from the center of it, right? And each one of those I'm going to wrap with its own little rainbow like this. And then when I spin with it and the wheel spins, then it'll be like a whole like rainbow in the middle of my spinning wheel, right? I'm totally excited about this. I, I can't wait. So I measured the spokes and everything like that and um, crocheted this, but um, I wasn't like really, I wasn't really, really precise with my measurements and not my measurements, but with my crocheting to fit the measurements I made um, because this doesn't fit. So essentially, this is the shape that I need um, with like all of the correct measurements and everything. And obviously, go away fly, this is not the same. <laughs> so it's off by about an inch. So, um, I'm just going to go crazy because of this fly. I'm just going to calculate my gauge or measure my gauge from here and then um, make the adjustments to um, make my pieces. So I'll be making six of these and then attaching them to my wheel and I'm so excited for this. And this yarn this is a yarn, like a little set that I got from one of my cousins for Christmas. Um, it came with, I don't know, there was like something crazy, like 20 different colors maybe. And there are about two of each color. And this is what the packaging looks like. Uh, Mira, Mira Handcrafts. And they're um, like DK weight. Yeah, DK weight. 10 gram minis, um, 22 yards, 22 yards each. And I believe this is 100% acrylic, does it say? It does not say, but I'm guessing it's acrylic. It looks like acrylic, it feels like acrylic. It walks and talks like acrylic. So, yeah. So I've got all my different colors in here. and that is my only other work in progress um, so let's put all of these things away so with that we will go into Kalisha and the babe and I feel like I do this every time like Kalisha and the babe which is my spinning section if you are a new viewer So we are in basically the middle of Tour de Fleece. And um, Tour de Fleece is kind of a spinning marathon um, type event that happens at the same time as the uh, Tour de France, which is the bicycling um, marathon. Um, it goes from July 6th to July 28th. And what most people have been doing that I've seen online is like making a goal to spend a certain amount of time each day. Um, I decided to do my goals a little bit differently. This is my first time participating in Tour de, tour de Fleece, like full on participating. Um, I think last year I spun a little bit on my drop spindle and I think that was really my first time knowing about the tour. But um, yeah, so this year I decided to set myself three goals. I had three goals and a bonus goal. So they were, tour, or goal number one is to finish my green fiber. So I purchased this green fiber from, um, it was dyed by Euphoric Fibers. I think I've had this fiber for like two or three years. And um, I had just been like working on it little by little. I was working, at, working on it on one of my handmade drop spindles. And um, 
yeah, it was just one of those projects that I would take out, spend a little bit, put it back. I did a whole lot of the work on that particular um, fiber during Adrian of the Freakish Lemons um, Sith and Spin. And so a lot of the progress that I got done on that fiber was during the Sith and Spin. Um, but so one of my goals, my first goal was to finish that green fiber, finish that spin, get that yarn done. And I did do that. So I finished that. It was actually the first thing I did um, for my Tour de Fleece projects. I finished that on July 8th. And I'll show it to you in a second. My second goal was to spin my acrylic fiber and do a chain ply. Um, I think last episode... Did I show it to you guys in the last episode? I think I showed it to you in the last episode, but I also showed um, me spinning this fiber um, on my little vlog that went up last Friday. But I finished the spin and did the chain flying and that was finished on the 15th, so just a couple days ago. My third goal is to do a two-ply gradient. Okay, so the rain has picked up again. As long as it doesn't start raining this way, we're good. Um, my third goal was to do, or is to do, a two-ply gradient. So um, I have a gradient skein, not skein, I have a gradient dyed fiber package. Ah. But um, my plan with that is to split it down the middle um, and spin both um, both bundles of fiber and then do a two ply um, to have a gradient. Um, that one I haven't started yet. And then my bonus goal was to dye some fiber myself. And originally I was planning on dyeing it in orange, yellow, and green and then spinning a fractal two ply from that. I have since changed that and I'm in the middle of working on that one. So, let's take a look at the finished Tour de Fleece goals. So here is my green spin. Now this is four ounces of uh, merino, bamboo, and nylon. And it's just a bunch of different uh, shades of green, which just makes me very happy inside. Um, I got 138 yards um, of a two ply and I bought this or I started spinning this on July 20th of 2017 and I finished it on July 8th of 2019 so yes it is time um, the next one was my acrylic fiber and this is acrylic and nylon blend I don't remember the percentages but um, this is, it was started on July 11th and finished on July 15th. It is 46 grams and I got 33 yards of a three ply chain ply. So pretty. And I'll put in some pictures of what this looks like, like what the strands look like lined up because the gradient came out really, really nice. Um, so I, I did learn quite a bit. This was the second chain ply that I did. Um, this was the second chain ply that I did. And the things that I learned that are very important with chain plying, um, pay very close attention to your consistency because there are times when, um, my yarn went like like thick and thin so with the the ply there'll be a very thin spot and then it jumps very thick and then jumps really thin again and I don't think like one it doesn't look good <laughs> but I feel like that makes that's gonna put a lot of stress maybe on that particular point where it jumps from thin to thick um, but yeah so I need to pay close attention to my consistency to try to make sure that I'm spinning as consistently as possible. 
I also need to uh, pay attention to how much spin I'm putting into the single. Um, with this one, I did run into um, times when I was flying and the single was overspun, so it was like kinking up on itself and it was hard to manage the tension, like maintain tension on my single um, and do the motion of the chain flying like all together. So there are some points where I got like, like it's not, it's not applied as neatly as it should be, but I think it's pretty good for like essentially my second, not even essentially, actually my second time uh, doing a chain ply. So yes, learning experience, which is exactly what I wanted this fiber for. Um. The next two um, fibers I want to show you are because um, one of my spin friends, uh, Brie, who is Stitchzilla um, on Instagram, me, Brie, and Mars, who is Hey Brownberry, are in like a little um, spinning group with just the three of us called Spinners. And um, so we like talk back and forth like showing our progress, encouraging each other, giving information, um, like different tools or tricks that we're finding and learning and stuff like that. And Brie mentioned in the group that um, whatever day this was, oh, the 12th, was a challenge day. So I decided to try something new. And what I tried was beehives. So uh, spinning a beehive is, is a type of... Um, spiral plying and let's see if I can open this up so that you can see that green one is a really good one <laughs> so this is the very first one I did so essentially to do a beehive you're holding your I guess your um, base yarn or the yarn that is getting wrapped or the ply that's getting wrapped um, you're holding it like this and then you're feeding your other ply on kind of at a 90 degree angle so I've seen in like some of the tutorials on YouTube which I only kind of kind of watch like oh that's kind of cool but I didn't really watch like how do I do this it was kind of in passing so I could be wrong about a lot of things so I'm holding my uh, white yarn which is just a commercial Deborah Norville serenity sock yarn holding it like this and then feeding my other single on um, Kind of at 90 degrees and then like I'd feed it on and then I'd push it like push the the fiber along the commercial one and like scooch it together and it would make kind of a little beehive a little bump and it was really cute um, the problem that I ran to ran into with this one is that my beehives were sliding around so that's when I went back to YouTube to see what I needed to do to fix that um, so then I tried this one which what I did differently was when I scooted the fiber up to make the beehive, um, I would scoot it up and then I would move my commercial yarn like forward a little bit and it would like wrap over the end of the bee the beehive to kind of like lock it in. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to do it, but that's how I did it. And you can see it. Oh, okay. No, you can't. No, you can't see that at all. Here we go. So that right there is my commercial yarn. So I would scoot this up, make the beehive, and then run my commercial yarn over the end and then continue down. And I really like this one. Like, it came out really cool. Oh, look at that one. That's, oh, I missed it. That's a good one. So um, this was really fun. This is definitely something I want to try um, to do again. Um, it works it works really well with a yarn that is like kind of thick and thin and slubby to begin with um, the single that I spun for this one was very like thin and consistent this single this pink is my very first hand spun ever like this is the fiber that I got from the random lady at Panoply in Huntsville Alabama who taught me how to spin on a drop spindle made of a dowel and an AOL CD. Like, 
throwback right here. So I'm super excited to have it in a finished yarn. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet, but I just love the texture. So it's definitely going to be something that really highlights that texture. Whew. The last um, thing I wanted to show you guys in Kalisha and the Babe is my hand dyed fiber. So I decided to dye this fiber. And like I said, my original plan was to do a orange, orange, yellow, and green um, like gradient and then do a fractal from that. I may still do that later on down the line, but after I spun this, I put it next to this, which is my original fractal, and you see how they wanna be together, right? Like, I, I couldn't be like, no, you can't. So then I was looking to see like, okay, is there a project that I can make with just the two? And I was like, mm, I feel like I need more yardage to really be able to like make a thing, right? So I decided to dye the fiber in another color that would go with this. And I have this baby. <sighs> okay guys, so when I finished dyeing this yarn, um, or this fiber, I had an epiphany, okay? I have said for years, like years and years, that my favorite colors are orange, yellow, and green. Like if anybody asked me, hey, Kalisha, what's your favorite color? Orange, yellow, and green. That was it. Like if anything, like one of those colors was going to rise to the top of like out of the three, I'm digging more green nowadays, or I'm digging more yellow nowadays, or digging more orange, right? And I realized that orange, yellow, and green is my favorite color combination. This is my favorite color. Like this color, <laughs> like it does something special to my heart, and I just, uh it's so beautiful. Like, Lamar called it dirty pool water. I'm gonna have to have a conversation with him and his choice for color names. But look at that. It's like, I don't, I don't even know. Like, it's mostly an aqua blue, but has some green overtones. Like, it's very watery. It's very much like tropical watery colors. Yeah. But oh my gosh, like when this fiber dried and I looked at it, like I felt like my heart was exploding out of my chest and I was so excited and I had to call my mom and be like, this color is just everything. Oh my gosh. I just, oh, I just need it all over me. <laughs> So yes, this is the, the fiber that I dyed. Um, the fiber is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Roving. So 100% um, Peruvian Highland wool, I believe it is. And um, yeah, I am really, really enjoying this. I thought that I had like felted it um, when I was dyeing it because I dyed it on the stove top. I was trying not to move it around a whole lot. Um, and when I finished with it, it was kind of, it kind of felt a little felty. So I was nervous, but, um, by the time I stripped it down, I stripped it down into eight segments. Um, and so far I think I've spun four. Yeah. I've spun four of them. So, um, yeah. And this is, this is how I've, I've prepared them. So I stripped them down um, and then I went through and just fluffed them out sideways like this. And then I just spin from there. And I really like this prep. I don't have to do a whole lot of um, like 
maintenance of the thickness while I'm spinning. Um, I am finding that I am more comfortable doing a backward draw. So um, my front hand stays still and it's controlling how much of the uh, how much of the twist is getting back to the fiber, uh, to the fiber supply, but my fiber supply hand is drawing backwards like this. So I end up doing a lot of this motion while I'm spinning, which is fine because I feel like I like rocking anyway. So I end up doing a lot of this and then sometimes I do switch back to the forward draw, which is more like this motion. Um, I find that doing this is um, putting like more pressure on this part of my hand so I do get like soreness in my hands um, when I'm spinning for for a while so yeah so these put that to the back these are going to be in a project together and I'm thinking that once I finish this one um, if I need like any other accents or breaks between the colors, I will put the the white um, Willamette, yeah, Willamette yarn um, in there as well, because they're about all the same like thickness and uh, consistency. Um, oh, another thing with this is um, I'm gonna need to rinse this when I finish this yarn. Like I'm gonna have to wash it because like. Can you see my fingertips are a little bit blue? That's just from, from spinning this today. So definitely we'll have to wash this before it goes into any projects with anything that might be white. Not about that bleeding life. So yes, that is, this is, this is all of my, not this. This is all of my, um, Tour de Fleece progress. I am quite proud of myself. Um, I'm hoping, I'm halfway through, well, not half. I guess this would be a quarter of the way through um, my hand, hand dyed spin. Um, so when I finish this one, then I'm going to start on that um, gradient. And hopefully, I'll be able to at least get that gradient started. Um, we are going out of town on Thursday. We're going out of town on Thursday, so I'm not going to be able to have my spinning wheel. We're going to be gone for like a week. So that's a week's worth of spinning like wheel time that I'm, I'm going to be losing. But um, what I plan to do is take my drop spindle with me and um, I prepped some like mystery fiber last night, like combed it out because I think I have pictures. I will show you pictures because baby. Um, I, my idea is to kind of spin that uh, on my drop spindle, kind of make it a little, um, a little chunkier, a little more thick and thin, so that I can play around with the um, spiral flying again, and uh, and get some more textures because that was a whole lot of fun. Like one thing that I really enjoy with, um, one thing that I really enjoy with any art form is the ability to break the rules or like drop the technique and just like kind of go a little wild style with it and that's kind of what I feel when I look at art yarns like there's technique in spinning right but then when you do something like an art yarn you're just kind of like like it's like spinning jazz right and I'm excited to try that but yeah so that's everything I have that's crafty um, I have been working on bags for my shop Yay! Um, so here's some of the bags that I'm working on for my next Etsy shop update. So I was trying to think like, you know, what kind of bags that I want to do for this um, upcoming update. And as July 31st is Harry Potter's birthday, I figured 
let me just do some more Harry Potter bags. And I found, I recently um, bought a bunch of new Harry Potter fabric that had just come into my Joann's store, my local Joann's. So um, I was super excited to cut into that. So most of these bags I will have two of, and they will each have their uh, handles. But we've got that one, and these are all my small size bags. This one there will only be one of because its mate is mine now because um, they're turned out to be writing on the back of the fabric. So if you are a bag maker or someone that purchases fabric from Joann's, check the back of your fabric before you take it home because evidently they write on the back of fabric now in Sharpies. Pro tip. We've got Hufflepuff. And there will be two of these. There'll be two of each of the next ones that I show you. Slytherin. Gryffindor. And Ravenclaw. So um, these I thought were really cool because they're so like, I don't know, they kind of remind me of like, I don't know what the feel, like varsity jacket. Like this is varsity jacket at Hogwarts type vibe. And um, yeah, I really like that. The only thing that I just, it bothers me is that Gryffindor's background is red. Like I understand that the other ones on gray kind of go with their coloring and everything like that. But I feel like this one, like if this had been also on a gray and then they had put the red and gold in there some other kind of way, I feel like you could have made, like I could have made something with all four of these fabrics together and Gryffindor wouldn't look like a sore thumb. Like, like Gryffindor by itself, super cool. But with, with the rest of these, come on fabric designers. Because I have leftovers, like I have like, I think there are like two inch strips left over from these fabrics. And I'm like, oh, I could put those together and like make a patchwork something. But that Gryffindor square just throws me off. So yeah, these will be in the shop. Um, not this coming Friday. So what date is that? So not the 19th, but the Friday after that, these will be in the shop. Um, I always do um, an attached progress keeper with all of my bags. The Harry Potter bags um, have an option where you can choose your house and um, the progress keeper is an owl with the appropriate bead colors with them. So yeah, um, I think that's everything that I have for you guys. That's everything crafty. So I guess we can talk about life and whatnot for a little bit. <sighs> so I've been reading a lot. And um, I recently finished two books, um, which I don't remember the last time I read books so quickly. Like it had to be like when I was in like middle school or high school or something like that. I don't remember like reading for fun a whole lot um, during college. Um, most of my reading for pleasure in college was like poetry and stuff, but, um, I just finished this book called Shadow Shapers by Jose Older, I think it is. And what's his name, Jose Older? I think it is. Daniel Older. His name is Daniel Jose Older. So I was right both points. Um, but Shadow Shaper was a really good book. Um, that book follows the main character. Her name is Sierra. And she is kind of dropped into the middle of this secret society that evidently her family is like deep into, but nobody ever told her. And she spends the entire book trying to figure out what the Shadow Shapers are, what it means to her family, why people are chasing her and trying to kill her and how can she um, use her newfound shadow shaping powers to save her family, save 
her city as well as um, save the legacy of the Shadow Shapers. And this book I really enjoyed because of how strong a character Sierra is. Like, she's not a, like, I need help to do whatever it is type of um, type of female character, which I really appreciated. Um, I listened to the audiobook, and all I kept thinking whenever she would get into a situation where she would essentially have to hold her own, um, all I kept thinking was like, yes, girl, yes. <laughs> Like, there were plenty times where she's with one of her uh, guy friends and foolishness pops off and the dude is like, okay, I'm going to go this way and I'm going to, like, try to to uh, distract them so that you can get away. And homie disappears and here she is face to face with treachery. And she has to, like, handle it all by herself, which I think it just... And that happened to her multiple times. And each time she was like, I'm gonna punch him in the face the next time I see him. And I was like, girl, you go and do that then. But um, it was really cool to see her growth in the story because she starts out as um, not necessarily a soft-spoken, kind of girl but she's she's quieter um and by the end of the book she like steps into like her power with like like an epic strength and it's amazing um there's there's one moment in the book where she essentially tells her aunt off for thinly veiled racist statements that her aunt is making and um, I was just like I was clapping in real life for this fictional character like it made me so happy I was like yes so yeah if you want to read a book with a strong female lead who is going to make you feel like like really cheering for her Shadow Shapers um so yeah, I am going to go on inside and probably do some spinning, um, maybe crochet on my yarn bomb for my spinning wheel, possibly. Or maybe I'll do some reading. Or maybe I'll download an audiobook and read and spin, because I can do that. Um, yeah. Um, I wore my what's this shirt called? I think it's called Mike Check. Um, but how y'all feeling? Are you all right? This has been a rough week for a lot of us in the fiber community, and I hope you take a second to check on your friends, check on your strong friends, your strong friends, check on you know those internet friends that you have that are like. At the not even just the ones at the forefront of these conversations but anybody that could be affected by the things that are happening in our fiber community because truth be told there have been days this past week where I have not wanted to go on Instagram at all because it it's it's a lot it is a lot um, the other day, not the other day, it was yesterday, um, I was scrolling on Instagram and I started seeing like, you know, all of the posts of the like Instagrammers or podcasters who are denouncing, um, not necessarily, yeah, denouncing racist behavior and hate speech and and all of that like we do not support that and I hope you know that my space is a safe space and XYZ and and I understand that people need to make statements like that I appreciate people making statements like that because I would I would like to know like if 
if when I come to your space, if you are, you know, putting in effort to make it a safe space, right? Um, I appreciate that. Um, I made the mistake of reading comments on this one particular one that I was scrolling. And I don't know what, what prompted me or made me think, oh, I should read the comments. Never read the comments. <laughs> but um, needless to say, in the comments, there were those, why can't we keep it all about knitting? And this is supposed to be about, you know, love of, love of fiber. And what that one comment say? Something like, I can't believe that you're, you're, someone's I can't remember exactly what it said so but it was basically saying that this person couldn't believe that people were um, asking this podcaster to um, basically state their their stance or take make a stance um, about everything and like this commenter sounded like they were just like insulted like how dare people ask you what you feel or what where you stand in this in this conversation and statements like that I don't even exactly know how to verbalize how they make me feel as a black person or as a uh, minority in this space um, as a member of one of the marginalized groups that are in this space, as someone who has experienced um, like that othering um, in in this fibery space, I don't I don't really know how to express how it makes me feel when I see someone say like I don't understand why you should have to um, put forth extra effort to make some somewhere safe for someone else. Seriously, um, that you know what that is. That is another example of seeing how little other people care about other people, and that bothers me. That that upsets me in a way that I can't really I can't really come up with the words right now but you know the podcaster who the, they were actually responding to the to the statements and um, they they did so in a very classy way which I really appreciated but I do like I do see you know whenever people are posting their I'm listening and learning and I am and and I believe people of color I believe your stories I see you people of color it, we see too so I hope that that everyone who is making these stances and everything I hope that they're from a space of honestly wanting these these bad experiences to stop. Um, I, I hope they come from a place of honestly wanting to make more spaces safe and welcoming to people of color and um, and people who are are marginalized. Um, I hope that that we don't have to have more more altercations like the ones that happened this past week, these past couple weeks. Um, that we don't have to have more altercations like that to get people to say, "Okay, this is a problem." Like, yeah. So this is definitely one of those things where change will happen 
when individuals make change. Like, we each have to be responsible for the ourselves and the people that we come in contact with. Like, those connections and those interactions are where we start change that those are those are the the those are the places those are the catalysts that that change actually develops out of when you when you see someone you know having someone who is saying something that is probably shouldn't be said or um, or says something that is hurtful it's important for us to to speak up and to explain why said things are hurtful and I think that taking taking time to explain why a certain thing is is problematic is definitely um, important because I've seen like some people who will just say oh that's that shouldn't be said or you're doing this you're doing that but whenever you go to critique a person right and this is this is coming from like as a as a writer like as a, a poet like a, a poet whenever I would write a poem right and I would read it to one of my friends I I would want them to critique it to make sure that what I'm saying is coming across the way that to communicate what I wanted to say. And they can either say, oh, I don't think you should have said it that way and leave it like that. And then that le that comes back to me to figure out, well, what would be the best way to say it? But I don't know what the best way to say something um, to somebody else. Like, I don't know how they're hearing it. So if they say, I don't think you should say it like that, you could say it like this, this, or this, then that gives me more of a, 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 a doorway to walk through to make the changes so that my message is received um, the best way possible, right? So when it comes to interacting with people who are in different um, demographics than we are, um, I think that it that by us telling you know other people like, hey, that thing you said was harmful, or that thing you said um, was was mean, or it hurt me, like. Yes, we need to state when things are harmful or hurt us, but we also need to state um, what, like, a, an alternate way. And sometimes we don't know. Like, sometimes something hurts me. I don't know how you could have said that better. What you just said was trash. <laughs> but if we are able to, if we are able to, and if we have the, the, the mental space and the bandwidth to like put those things together um, I think that we should like let people know when they've hurt us as well as give them ways to not hurt us in the future and I've seen so many people online pointing out tools and books and podcasts and all kinds of things that are like just those tools like just that thing that says okay you messed up this is how you can fix it right and I've seen I've seen people putting that information out there and it's almost like it's sitting right there on a plate right just pick it up <laughs> pick it up that's all you got to do pick it up read it listen to it like make yourself better like do that work and um, so I'm just hoping I'm hoping that people will learn to do that and and to care a little bit more about other people and to be um, a little bit more careful of other people yeah because a lot of us are hurting. A lot of us are walking around with bruises and wounds, but we still smile through it and we still are present through it. And
yeah. <sighs> Editing this is going to be a trial. But, yes. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for spending some time with me. Um, thank you for being part of my universe. Leave a comment down below of something positive that has happened to you either this week or no specifically this week since this week has been kind of a garbage a garbage juice week <laughs> um here on the interwebs um leave a comment of something positive that has happened to you within the last two weeks um something positive that has happened to me within the last two weeks is dying my fiber and and having the epiphany that 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 this is my actual favorite color I'm 33 and I just learned my favorite color positive moment so yes I hope you have a wonderful week um, enjoy your time with the people that you love spread some kindness spread some positivity be radiant in your positivity be radiant in your love for your fellow human beings like push that out into the world push that peace